um, for Committee to Whole. Welcome back, uh, 2018. We have one item on the agenda today, uh, the Downtown Civic Core Plan. John. Thank you, Council President and Council Members. We're excited to be here again tonight um, to wrap up this project with you. Um, it's a great night to be here because of what's going to happen later in the evening, of course. Uh, but before we get there, we hope we can entertain you for a few minutes uh, with the Downtown Civic Core vision and, and that action and vision plan, vision and action plan, I should say. Um, we're going to give you an update um, of what has been added to the plan uh, since the draft you reviewed on December 11th. I'm going to go through that very quickly, uh, leave some time for you to ask some questions, and then wrap up um, and get you uh, teed up so that you can adopt it via resolution at your council meeting later this evening. So I'd like to introduce again um, Alex Dupi with the uh, firm of MIG. Uh, Alex is here uh, for his final appearance here at the city of Renton, uh, at least for now. Um, and he's going to give us our presentation tonight. Welcome, Alex. Well, thank you, and everybody. Welcome uh, to 2018. We've uh, made it through. Um, I, w I just want to give a brief presentation to talk essentially about what we've done since December. Uh, you had we presented on December 11th for some uh, the draft plan and really not focusing on you know the, the deep dive into the plan like we did with the last uh, commu committee of the whole. Really focus on what those changes are and then uh, talk a bit about some of the cost estimates because that is a big new addition to to the project and you know essentially wraps up the, the major elements of of the plan. Uh, so I just want to step through. Um, We'll talk briefly about that. Within your packet, you do have the De December 11th presentation that I had given for a while back, just if you need more information or you have questions from that. Um, again, I'm not going to step through that, but you have that for your use. Uh, the major elements of the plan um, and the major kind of formatting of the plan has not changed. Um, we have made some refinements and corrections, essentially some, some editorial comments through some of the strategies and of the other actions, uh, primarily to either streamline or to reorder so that they make a bit more sense. Um, but it's primarily adding the cost estimates are the big one as well as an executive summary, which we have reformatted pretty significantly so that it becomes more of a marketing uh, piece for downtown. It's something you can take when you meet with folks uh, to essentially talk about the plan and what the, the, the vision is for, for the district. Um, and then just as a reminder, the, the Renton Planning Commission did recommend adoption on December 6th of the plan, uh, provided that we would add cost estimates into that. We've, we've done that, but I just want to make sure that uh, that is up there as well. And then from your process, we met on December 11th. We talked about the plan. Uh, we didn't have those cost estimates in there, so we'll spend some time on that tonight. Um, and then this evening, uh, the council will consider the draft um, Renton Downtown Civic Core Vision and Action Plan um, dated January 2018th, which is the one that you have in your, your packet, which is the complete document. Uh, we are asking for uh, a recommendation that the Committee of the Whole concur with the Planning Commission staff recommendation to approve the plan uh, by resolution. Uh, so this plan you have in front of you, we are asking for adoption by resolution this evening. <coughs> Just as a reminder, we are talking about um, not just the Civic Corps, but the entire downtown district. So this plan evolved from really a very specific Civic Corps plan to really a complete downtown plan for you know, all of downtown Renton, which has been great because they do operate together. Um, they're not independent of one another. And so the plan documents both of those, those specific areas in a holistic f fashion. And it is based on public engagement. <laughs> So whether it's traditional or online, uh, I have an example here of the project website. We have done an extensive amount of public engagement that these strategies are based on. So the number of people that have been a part of this has been extraordinary uh, for a project that's really a very focused geographic area. And we continue to update this, this website with current information. Um, just as a quick reminder, we do have a vision, organizing themes and strategies. And I'm not going to step through each of the pieces, but just to talk briefly about some of the organizing themes, because we have made some refinements to those lines on the map, uh, primarily in two areas. Uh, right next to the, um, parking, the city center parking garage, uh, we have um, changed one of those areas to uh, be activate instead of create, because there is already some, some pieces there. And then a couple other small refinements on those lines as well. So not major changes, but just you know getting into a few of the details on, on uh, that map to make it um, as effective as possible. 
For the most part, the strategies are broken up into six design and development strategies. I'll step through each of these just to show some of the, the key differences uh, that we had from the previous plan. Figure 1.2, which is the opportunities map, we have made a few small changes. Uh, you'll probably not notice them on this, but it's primarily about facade improvements. So you know, if there's a half a block or a building that we felt needed to to be identified for facade improvements, we've made some of those changes. But for the most part, this map is the same, um, which is those few few small changes, small uh, revisions. Uh, we did meet with the airport um, to talk about some of the clear zone issues, and we wanted to make sure that was incorporated in here. So under DDS-1, we have added uh, within the Renton Municipal Code to make sure that we are in compliance with FAA. Um, that's already part of your code, but we just wanted to identify it explicitly um, in case any buildings are higher, because we are um, uh, recommending some height bonuses depending on the type of use. And then we added some specific images for signage to show some very uh, differences uh, that, we, that would work downtown. Um, under DDS2, primarily this is the programming table. This is the the area where we're looking at all the public spaces, the piazza, um, you know, all of Tonkin Park, all the other spaces, and we there is a, a large table, table one that has programming. Uh, we made some minor changes to that, just you know, looking back to see what should be in there, what shouldn't. So each of those programmed elements um, are generally the same, but there's been a couple small revision. We've done some word changes to strategies, but nothing that would change the content or the context of those strategies. It's really just you know refinements and editorial comments or editorial changes. And then we did add some strategies to the types and detail for improvements, primarily around Memorial Park and others. We tried to get a little bit more specific. And here's the map. Um, one thing we changed on the map, uh, we've identified rather than just the gateway, which was Memorial Park initially, we've identified both second and third as gateways, and we've provided strategies to address both of those. Um, <coughs> otherwise, this map is about the same. For um, DDS-3, we've updated the, the proposed arts trail, and that is um, in recognition of a meeting that we had with the Regional Arts Commission uh, to talk about where that arts trail might, might go and what, what it might look like. Uh, we also added some recommendations that they had requested in within that meeting, primarily around how do you actually do this. There's a lot of things that we're asking them to do, as well as other nonprofits. How do you start to coordinate that? And the big one under DDS-3 is the recommendation for an arts coordinator. Um, whether that's part-time or full-time, that's really dependent uh, on you know, the, the job and what's out there. But um, acknowledging that this does take time and take effort. And within the map, the arts trail changes are primarily along the Cedar River, so connecting the dots between the, the Burnett Lanier Park and the library, so adding some potential interpretive elements there or art, but also, you know, really making that connection between the trail between the Cedar River trails and City Hall. So using that Renton connector as a way to you know, showcase art and have it as an attraction. So it it completes the uh, the trail, if you will. Under DDS-4, which is primarily about safe and attractive streets, um, the one piece that we were missing here was the, the River Street concepts. And these are primarily for Williams and Wells. And so we've added some, some concepts for that, which could show you know, how you actually would start to do a River Street. Uh, these are slightly different than a traditional street. We've been talking about how you do interpretive elements, how you incorporate water, you know, really st strong green elements into this while still providing strong economic development opportunities. But you know, focusing on the pedestrian, the interpretive elements, um, but also how this integrates with the street. So we've just added some graphics to, to show how that might, that might look. Uh, DDS-5, we've changed some reordering of the strategies, primarily around, you know, if you want to do something with a parking garage, you know, when do, you, when do the police relocate versus doing those improvements? So we've switched some of the order of those to make them more realistic, but also added a uh, definition for what makerspace is, and that is in, under DDS-5. So you'll see with most of these revisions that they're just refinements, um, not really additions or major changes. And that's the same with DDS-6, is minor reordering of some strategies. Um, no, nothing major, it's all the same stuff, just making sure that it's in the right order. So with that, we turn into transit planning strategies. And these are essentially the same except for one small change, and that is changing, at least in the short term, the alignment for the F-Line. Um, originally, we had that going all the way down Logan Avenue. Uh, the question came to be is if we want to close off Logan for um, the farmer's market or another event now before it's a festival street, 
you know, why do we have to go through the effort of re, you know, rerouting the F line if we don't have to? Um, so using the existing transit street as needed until that festival street comes online and then working on, on moving the F line, you know, you know out, out of the area within the long term plan. So again, it's, it's a, an interim improvement, but one that makes it a little bit easier for you to implement some of the festival, the interim festival street changes. So I want to focus most of the attention tonight on implementation. So just as a reminder, we've broken up implementation strategies as quick <laughs> wins, with, which are really things that could happen now with you know, limited or you know, no resources. It uh, doesn't take a lot of money to get a lot of these things off the ground. Short-term actions within five years, and then mid- or long-term actions, which are five, five to ten years. Uh, I want to stress that the city is not responsible for all of these specific projects and actions within, within the plan. As you read through implementation, you'll see that some of it is City of Renton, some of it's Municipal Arts Commission, some of it are nonprofits, some are the downtown partnership. So it's a variety of different leads uh, that will work in concert with one another to develop and, and implement these strategies, but it's not always the city that has to take the lead on these projects. We've, uh, revised and refined the list of funding sources. We've also added notes, which I'll show just in a second to give a little bit more detail for reading the matrix. Um, and then also refined um, the cost, which, which we'll talk about in just a second. This is a difficult um, page to read, I know, but I want to just show this as, you know, these are all the various funding sources and potential uh, people who might be involved with this. And the notes column at the bottom really starts to stress about, okay, what is exactly within the cost element estimates? What does this mean for staffing? What are some considerations that you need to think about as you move forward? And with implementation, we have three main sections I want to focus on. Uh, the first is the cost, which is new uh, this evening. The, that's the main element. Uh, Primary, re primary responsibility and partners. That's where I was talking about where it's not necessarily always the city of Renton. It office, often is, but not always the city of Renton who's doing the, the lead implementation. This column is what identifies that on who should take the lead. Um, often there are partnerships between the various agencies. And then we've done a fair bit of work in refining the, the potential funding sources. So we have general cost ideas, what this is going to take, where does the money come from? Is it capital improvement program? Is it general fund, bond, levy, private funding? You know, what, what are the various sources that, that might be used for that specific type of project? So for capital cost, uh, those were primarily consultant generated, particularly the street improvements. Uh, we went through a pretty exhaustive process to look at, you know, with the concepts that are on the, on the, on the, in the plan now, for the level of detail that we have, what would that take? Uh, we broke those out block by block, looked at what each of the cross sections were, and assigned costs for those, both hard and soft costs. So that's the capital costs for the, the just basic improvements, but also what, it, what would it take to design, to implement, to manage all of those specific pieces. Uh, the, the big piece on the capital side is that the transit projects are, are likely KC Metro or Sound Transit led. Um, certainly the city of Renton has a role in that. But other than, you know, with most capital projects, they'd be city-led, but the transit projects may not because that, you know, that's a much different process. So I just want to identify that not everything in the capital projects are, are city-led projects. Um, there are some projects in there that, might, that will require some additional study, and so we've left those as TBD or to be determined. Um, they may or may not be city-led, but things like moving the police station out of the, the parking <coughs> garage to another location, we don't know where they would go you know, what that other location would be or what improvements would that be it might require additional study. So there are a few tasks in there that would require additional study to identify those, those costs. Um, there's very few, but for the most part, you know, those are the ones that um, will require a little bit extra time to think about. For costs that are li limited or identified as not applicable, most of those tasks are things that could fit within an, a city work program. Um, if it's updating zoning code or site design standards, uh, developing, you know, plans or future studies, many of those things can be identified within an existing <coughs> work program, so we didn't assign cost to those specific issues. And just some examples of capital projects, uh, pavilion reconstruction, piazza construction, that's actually in your capital improvement program already, uh, both for planning and design. Uh, you know, the cost for a festival street, for example, and depending on what that ultimate design is, um, you know, it could be between <coughs> and eight million dollars, and that's that's a key piece. So again, with these capital costs, is that we have 
concepts now, which is essentially assumes full build out. When you get to design, you know, those costs, those costs could change depending on what that specific design is um, that is to be determined. Um, some of the other pieces, you know, <coughs> like TS2, which is some of the transit center improvements, that includes both the layover, but also includes um, South Renton Transit Center. So as that starts to come up and you start to get that new um, transit hub, we've identified costs as, as a proportion of that. Uh, one that I know is uh, we've spent a lot of time on and we talked <coughs> at length about is um, wayfinding and how would you start to, to implement wayfinding. Um, we've done general cost estimates by sign type. Uh, the key piece with wayfinding in terms of cost is really getting a fabricator um, under contract to start to develop that and that would be the next step of this process. We've identified and um, have solidified those designs. The next step would be to actually take those to a, to a fabricator or get bids from a series of fabricators to start to, to do that. Um, but in the interim, we've identified specific costs for those types of types of uh, signs. Excuse me, Alex? Yeah. Go okay. ahead. Um, the monument cost, is that including um, installation or is that just production? Those would include installation okay. as well. Um, and I, I want to stress, you know, it depends. We, we've identified generally how the types of materials that they would be constructed. Um, the next step is really for a fabricator to start to do construction drawings for those pieces. Uh, but that's why you have this range uh, yeah. for that. So these generally include um, uh, installation as well. Okay. Follow up. Uh, I guess my concern on, on the sign, and, and it needs a lot more discussion in my opinion, is how they're being made and how it's really nice for us to go out and spend twenty thousand dollars on a mm -hmm. sign and then we have to continually maintain that sign and our city staff the, the, the original signs that were uh, suggested before our, our city shops our sign shop couldn't couldn't repair them because they didn't have the equipment and it's you know they'd get too specialized so I mean I just concerned that down the line that the council take a hard look at at how the signs are developed and made because they have to be maintained afterwards and if we don't maintain them then they don't look good and it detracts from what we're trying to do but to have to go to a specialty shop every time we try and fix something, it's kind of like, and I'll use the example of railing as you come off of 405 on the sunset. It's a special design. We don't have, so sometimes you go up there and you look at months before we can get, get it fabricated and people look at the city and say, man, can't they even fix a simple fence? So I, those are things that I, you know, as we adopt this, I just think we need to be cognizant of. Yeah. Well, and that, and that's a that's a great point. One thing we we did meet with the city sign shops, and I think got some great feedback from them about one: are they capable of, of producing these signs? And they were they were clear in that you know we this is not the the type of sign that we we produce. But they gave great feedback in terms of the design from a maintenance standpoint. You know, one: don't do etched. Um, metal because if somebody graffitis it you're not gonna be able to get the paint out of so so we have incorporated that into some of the revisions but it's certainly something to consider as you move move forward but that's you know that's typical of any sign and any wayfinding uh, program mm -hmm. you know not just Renton but it, but any city uh, I think as we as you get into the fabrication we, we've we have recommendations on what that would be um, specific fabricators may have ideas on coatings for example that um, can help with with the maintenance unit. Go ahead, Don. Do you no, I, 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 that's not just a okay. concern down yeah. the line because I've been been around yeah. these signs for a long time, and it's I, it's a very good point, mm -hmm. and I think staff intends when it moves uh, the wayfinding uh, sign system into its own project, uh, it does need to look at responsibilities for maintenance, which signs are maintained by what department or are they maintained in some other way? Uh, the beauty of these systems is they're very advanced now out there in the world. And I think the fabricators bring along with them some ideas for how you to manage the maintenance on your own or how they can give you a package where you might 
uh, buy some extra pieces and parts and store them so that when you do have to go out and maintain and make a, a, a switch out, then you've got that product right there and available for you. So I think that uh, those are all really good comments, and I think that they have to be part of the, the management of the project from this point on. Go ahead. Just some examples of, of other, other projects. Um, and again, for these, th these cost items, these are not, <coughs> not um, the complete list within the plan. I've pulled some examples uh, of various projects within, within the plan itself. Um, there are the larger capital projects, which we just discussed, but there are also small scale projects that, that go into the, and make really kind of the, the bulk of a lot of the plan. Uh, basic things like adding street lighting you know, replacing lighting or adding lighting uh, where people have told us they feel unsafe. Um, you know, so starting to, to build upon that, but also replacing missing street trees. There are a number of tree wells that don't have, have trees, so identifying costs and adding those into the plan to make sure that they are identified and, and it's allocated for, to, to implement these specific pieces. Um, we do have a few studies, uh, and we weren't able to accomplish everything within this, this plan, but things that were identified uh, throughout this process, you know, developing something like a marketing plan for the pavilion and the surrounding areas. In some of the organizational strategies, we talk about maybe you should do a different lease agreement or a different type of lease agreement. How do you actually start to get different businesses <coughs> and organizations in there uh, to take, take, you know, better advantage of, of the location even, even today? So. Things like marketing plan, plans or developing a housing investment strategy. Our retail consultant said the biggest thing, um, you know, going for strong retail is to have a lot of people living nearby. So actually developing a, a housing strategy for downtown that can help support some of the stuff that's already happening. Um, one piece, and that this is one that's not a city of Renton-led uh, project, but you know, evaluating the feasibility of a parking and business improvement area. That's something that typically funds a downtown association, um, you know, using different types of revenue. So those types of studies are things that can be done by the Renton Downtown Partnership. Certainly the city of Renton has a, a role in that, but this is one of those examples where the city of Renton is not always in the lead on, on that process. So there are a few of these studies peppered throughout, <coughs> throughout the plan for future consideration. And then finally, uh, from a staffing standpoint, we do recommend uh, not necessarily additional staffing, but either if it was additional staffing or reclassifying sta staff to help organize some of the downtown efforts. You know, successful downtowns have downtown coordinators, um, you know, and that's a big piece of, of many towns, whether it's you know small or large, that actually start to organize a, a focused effort in downtown Renton. Um, the other piece I talked about, one was potentially an arts coordinator, uh, at least part-time to start organizing some of the pieces between, say, the Arts Commission, the Arts Trail, the city, of, the city of Renton, and downtown partnership. So again, it's some of those coordination pieces that, again, are not necessarily funded through city of Renton, but could be funded through the 1% arts program. Uh, so it's, it's not always general fund uh, that, that funds staffing. Uh, the other piece uh, for this, and I think primarily that's actually already happening to some degree, is to really strengthen the downtown partnership. You know, with whether it's merging other organizations like Piazza Renton or others to really make uh, the downtown partnership the key organizational factor in, in downtown. Um, that will require hiring an executive director uh, to do that, do that work. And so there, the partnership is already on that track to, to be looking at some of these things. But again, we wanted to make sure these are identified in the plan because we feel these are critical pieces to you know, have the plan be successful and, and move forward um, in good speed. <coughs> and then I just want to highlight, we, we do have some other things that are not um, part of the adoption package, but we do have some appendices that are under a separate cover, and that is the public engagement summary. We have about 825 pages of public engagement. It's about two, page, two inches thick. Uh, we didn't stick it into the document. Um, it is there for reference and availability. Uh, but we also have other things. We've, we've looked at some best practices for food carts. Uh, specifically semi-permanent ones, uh, what other cities are doing. Uh, we provided some examples of how you might do a um, parking business improvement area, um, some analyses that Leland has done in other communities, as well as housing investment strategies. So again, these aren't part of the adoption package, but I want to highlight that there is some other work out there that staff is uh, using as a resource to uh, further the plan. Okay, Alex, thanks so much. 
Uh, so just to recap, uh, the recommendation tonight uh, for the Committee of the Hold is to concur with the Planning Commission and staff recommendation to approve adoption of the Rent and Downtown Civic Corps Vision and Action Plan dated January 2018 by resolution. Um, to wrap up tonight, um, I would like to uh, give a shout out to the Community Advisory Committee, which was one of the many committees that uh, was involved in representing the broader community, both in downtown and Renton. Uh, Gene Sens um, is here tonight. He was a member of that group and, and has joined us to show his support for the plan. And, and we appreciate his engagement and involvement in this and all the other members as well. Um, unfortunately, I'm just going to note for the record uh, that we missed listing one of the members of the CAC in the plan, and we will be getting that into the final version that's adopted. Um, and that person is Rolanda Vineyard Baker. Um, she's with Wasatch, and she's the manager of the properties Metropolitan Collection, Revo 225, and Burnett Station Apartments. Unfortunately, we, for whatever reason, missed her name on the list, and we're going to make sure we get that on there. She was a very good participant at some of the meetings that we had and want to make sure that she's noted for that. That's all we have tonight. Thank you very much. <clears throat> all right. Um, Don, Don has. Uh, well, just one more issue on the downtown plan that I read in there. Is that your recommendation is we go back to parking meters? Uh, there, there is a recommendation for stronger parking management downtown and that it could be could be meters over time, uh, but at the moment now, at least stronger enforcement of you know the one and a half or two hour uh, meter times or the uh, parking times, and so that's that's in an effort to actually start to use the municipal part, the city center parking garage more more effectively. So using your resources better and actually you know helping fund some of the other the other pieces through those those revenues. Uh, it, and I guess one of your recommendations is that. We most likely need to update our parking ordinance so that they can't park in the same block. That's that, that's correct. And then, I mean, that's that's a, yeah. that's something we can do without any cost. I think that's already on the book. Well, there's there's a there's a little glitch in that ordinance. Oh. It's you know, and I'll refer to Bellevue because Bellevue has you can't park in the same block, so you can't take and move your car around the block and then come park again. And the way our ordinance is, you can do that or move your car a foot or two. Uh, so after two hours, you could move your car six or eight feet and then still be, get another two hours. And that's, and that's kind of what's happening in a lot of downtown. Yeah. And so that, that's something I think we could do very inexpensively found a ticket for that. Well, I think I'm I just, have. this, it, things have changed since oh. you got your last parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and, you know, I, I just uh, yeah. think that's something that we, the council can take a, yep. take a look at as a remedial step because it, it, it doesn't take a metal giant to drive down Third Avenue and see which businesses uh -huh. Uh, people are parking in front of all day, mm -hmm. which always amazes me that I take, I need to need that parking. They complain to the city that the, we need parking, mm -hmm. but yet we park our, our cars right in front of our business and figure out how we can jockey them so we're there all day, uh. keeping that space away from the customer that I need to keep my doors open. Yeah, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. So we need to, I think we need to take a look at that. And then if I understand your recommendation right on the, on the parking garage, that now we give two hours free parking, which is great, but people have to take a ticket. So maybe changing that <coughs> policy a little bit would, would help people. Yeah. You know, in, in, a general sense, the, the parking recommendations are designed to, one, avoid some of the stuff that you're talking about now is, you know, having people sit in that spot or, or move and then not be that far, far apart. So it's to better you use an, pretty much an empty garage with the exception of the um, um, park and ride for KC Metro. So that, that could be a variety of things. It could be different times on the street versus what's, what's in the parking garage now. But it could also, um, 
you know, really come down to enforcement and making sure that your code is accurate and, and clear. That was one of the, the first things that Fair and Peers told us when they reviewed the parking code is that it's somewhat confusing about what you can and can't, can't do. So those are easy things that are quick wins that really don't take a lot of time to implement. Um, whereas enforcement, if you're adding staff, might be a little bit more of a, a heavy lift to, to get there. Any additional questions on the civic uh, plan? No, I just have a comment. Go ahead, Armando. Um, so I was pretty vocal about wanting a downtown plan four years ago, and, and I really appreciate the effort and um, the amount of um, input that you got from the public and the business owners, and, and the whole process I think was fantastic. And um, I don't know that we'll be able to get it done by next year, but it's definitely, it gives us the blueprint and the outline of what we'd like to see in moving downtown forward. So thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it's, it's been a great process, and, and it's also a long-term process. So you know, that's why we push some projects further out, because they take not just planning, but also if it's a street improvement, you have to design it. You have to get a, you know, you have to get a designer on board. You have to find the money to, to do that. Those are things that take a longer period of time, whereas you know, a lot of this stuff, programming can happen tomorrow. Uh, so there's, there's things that you could really do pretty quickly to start to you know, just kind of build on the stuff that's already happening. So it's been a great project. Go ahead, Arm. Go ahead, Caroline. Um, I especially like how it's arranged with the short term and the quick wins because people want to see our efforts, you know, come to life. And we understand that a lot of these projects are going to be 10 years long. But I would kind of like a better understanding of, you know, what that list looks like for the short term and the quick wins, and then how you're going to coordinate all of that, you know, in advance of doing the other projects. Um, I guess, you know, we have one year for this plan to gel, but I'm assuming we're going to try to start some of these things sooner, right? Some of the real quick wins. Uh, I wonder if you could clarify the, the one year to, 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 for the plan to gel. Do I want to be able to answer I, I, your I thought, question? The, I thought the understanding was it was going to take the rest of 2018 to have this completely formalized as far as the details of what we're going to be doing. I think generally, you know, the, the plan's pretty broad and there are a lot of actions, uh, both the, on the quick wins, short terms and long terms. Uh, I think the next step will be for the uh, various departments that would be affected to kind of consider these actions and which ones they can integrate, whether or not it's a possi possibility of integrating them into 2018 work programs. Um, but probably most importantly for ones that would take funding um, is which ones would be put forward through the budgeting process. Um, for 2019-2020, uh, um, and then also for the levy that's being considered. Um, so I think that there, th this document I think is intended um, to, to probably go beyond what the original intent was as far as being a blueprint for downtown, but also to assist you in, in putting together the funding plans, uh, both for the next budget in relation to downtown as well as the levy for the broader city. Thank you. Go ahead, Don. Uh, am I I just want to emphasize, and I hope I'm right, that passing a resolution, which I'm all for doing this evening, doesn't guarantee the funding. No, no. I mean, no. The, the, the funding it's has to, to it uh, has to come back to council, and, and we have to have a discussion on it. But I, I don't want the public to say, oh, they passed this plan, and it says you should hire an arts director, and you should hire this, right. that the city is just going to right. go out yes. and start hiring people uh, without going through our normal budget process. Nope. Well, and I would say ser several of the larger projects too. I mean, we we had a great amount of public involvement through this process, but there is a lot more that's going to have to happen for each of these individual process mm -hmm. processes, like the Piazza, for example. That's already part of your capital improvement program. Uh, there'll be a public involvement process with that, or some of the city or some of the street conversions, which are you know already in the, in the plans for second and, and third. That's also a public process. So, yeah, the the, the plan provides the framework, um, but it doesn't you know it doesn't promise that all of those things are going to happen exactly you know as Please. they are. So, Mr. President. Please. Randy. Yeah, this is a great line of questioning. Thanks, Caroline, for bringing it up. Um, yeah. So, c can we sort of uh, leave here then with a common understanding of of your, really what those early next steps are, and and maybe others understand it, and I I don't quite. But um, so I'm really excited about this plan also, and I want to thank everybody that's been involved. Um, and I guess our our staff would then take it and, and sort out some of the things really are not that that money. Uh, that, I mean, they're they're not that hard to find the money for. 
but <clears throat> of course many of them are are quite inexpensive um, and we'll want to attach a timeline to it um, I imagine we could talk it at the council retreat probably is is one opportunity to discuss it um, but is there is there sort of a next steps laid out for for this uh, that I'm not aware of or <laughs> I, I can and it's okay if there's not I mean I just it would be, be no, good I, to sort of lay it out now probably we can certainly make that part of the retreat and, and talk about next steps I think staff can come back and say we've got as you said we got the quick wins short term and longer term so we can we can come back to you with some suggestions on how we might want to approach some of those and yeah. begin to begin to prioritize those for your consideration now, it, it, and as an example in, in my department community development um, we've We've been approached while we've been doing the plan uh, by outside parties that have said, you know, we like what you guys are doing. We'd like to be a part of it. Um, so how can we get yeah. started on right. our little piece of the pie? Uh, two examples. One, um, a food cart uh, yeah. pod demonstration project that the Washington State, may, uh, Washington State uh, Food Truck Association wants to be a part of. Uh, they've kind of been waiting on the sidelines um, until the, the yeah. plan's adopted tonight. Um, they've uh, selected a location that's owned by the city and then want us to work with them to get that permitted and open in the spring. So that's one that we've been holding off, but you know, we can actually, we get the benefit of having an outside organization that can handle that. It, it, it'll just involve staff with typical permitting processes. Okay. Um, the South Renton uh, Connection Neighborhood Group wants to do something with their um, public art funding that they have. Um, they might be able to do an, an early start on one of these projects just to kind of define yeah. where district is that's that's con that's kind of pointed out in the plan um, that would be a nice way to kind of get that started even though the project itself might be several million dollars down the road um, so I think that in community income development we're looking at those opportunities um, and I think some of the other departments will be looking at the quick wins too for 2018 right. to see what options there might be there as well so yeah, hmm. good topic then probably for the council retreat. Yes, I agree. Yep. Good. Any other questions or comments? I'd like to say on behalf of staff that we really appreciate the council support in this process throughout. Um, you know, in a lot of communities that I've worked in, the council doesn't allow you to allow them to be brought into the planning process. And I think that's been one of the most gratifying aspects of this is that uh, as uh, elected representatives you've you've allowed us to allow you to be a part of it and you've responded uh, wonderfully and you've been involved and we really appreciate that and um, uh, I think the plan is better for it and I, I'm hoping that the broader uh, community support is there because of that as well thank you very much all right I have a uh, committee report uh, committee to hold recommends concurrence in the Planning Commission and staff recommendation to approve adoption of the Renton Downtown Civic Core Vision and Action Plan dated January 2018. The committee further recommends that the resolution regarding this matter be presented for reading and adoption. Any concerns with me signing this committee report? All right. All right, it is signed. Is there anything else? No. All right, we are adjourned 15 minutes early.